Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. It's a house! This guy may be like the dumbest person on the face of the earth. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? You know, that's just one step above stupid. Have you lost the last three brain cells, or do you just have cabbage for brains? Five brain cells? four aren't working. There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dadgum swamp. Huh? It's a honey crisp apple, okay? That's coming up, Amber, coming up. <sighs> one more, one more bite. Wild. Oh, by the way, that John Forsyth guy, he got, uh, remember the guy that, he was like a cryptocurrency thing with his brother, and he got, my stomach just went, uh, they ruled it a suicide. But what was the van doing there? Remember the van that showed up? Huh, weird stuff, weird stuff. How do I get the... Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, well, remember we thought that, because remember he was giving away stuff to all of his family members, so it seemed like that. Well, thanks. Yeah, we re really struggled on the last live, so hopefully we can do better on this one. So I'll say it again. If you're out there and you want to help support the stuff that we do on this channel, and you can afford it, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the last show was one of the worst shows we've ever had. And if you're there, hey, that'd be great. <laughs> if not, then you know, we'll just continue to have the worst night that we've ever had. One of them. All right, uh, well, let's see. So I thought, like, tonight we could just, people could call in and talk about, you know, like, I don't know, the, the Sebastian Rogers case is one that's just been bugging me a lot because of how so many people are, you know, just sort of, with no information at all, blaming the you know, stepdad and the mom, 
you know, merely because, like, that's where Sebastian Rogers was last seen by the mom. Because other than that, there's nothing, right? Absolutely nothing. Hey, thanks, little puppy paws. Yeah, that was a pretty good video. Fortunately, not very many people watched it yet again. So the, today is a real struggle because there's no ad revenue from the videos, very little, and the show earlier sucked. And now we're on to a third show um, after yesterday was bad also. So I'm trying to <laughs> figure out what to, what to do, but we're here anyways. I was going to do a later show regardless because it's the weekend. Uh, I've never been able to send stickers and don't know why. Uh, well, there's there's PayPal out there. You can always help with that if you feel like it. But that one doesn't even take the 30%. Hey, Big Bird, 420. <laughs> yeah, well, cool, cool. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to put the uh, number up on the screen. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff to talk about. What The, the Koberger bullcrap uh, alibi that he came up with. I mean, what a joke. Jesus. Unfortunately, there's all these people out there. You know, the Koberger, I love Koberger crowd. The ones that want to go date him. Uh, they think he's hotter than hell now because he's a killer of four people. Um, they just don't, they think it's like the greatest, oh my God, they have exculpatory, they don't have any exculpatory information. Nothing. Zero. And you can talk about the Delphi case if you wanted to. Yep, the stargazing alibi. But uh, I hope you guys help uh, support the channel later this this evening just to get us back on track. All right, so anyways, there's the phone number up there if you want to call in uh, regarding these topics. Let me know what you're thinking. That'd be great. Um, I You know, the, here's the thing is, even if it turned out later by some miracle, the Proudfoots had something to do with it, the, be, the treatment of them right now with no information has been appalling by people okay absolutely appalling disgusting really and uh, but but see gray if it, it was true then we no no you you're acting like this with no information in fact uh who cares what the ex-wife is saying what does it have to do with sebastian who cares what now, Seth is saying about some incident from before. It has nothing to do with anything. But everybody's interested in, in uh, you know, reading about it and talking about it, and et cetera. Well, so it looks like we're about the same as the last show currently, maybe even worse. Frat. Yeah, the frat has nothing to do with the Koberger case. Brian Koberger is 100% the killer in the um, Idaho 4 murder case. That's not even just, well, that's your opinion, Gray. It's true. He is the killer, okay? Now, if you want to go date the guy, you go right ahead. Yeah, he is the killer. Just think about it. <laughs> I mean, it's just... You know, you got a guy that, um, you know, he is a you know, criminology doctorate student who's really into serial killers. He, God, my stomach's just, oh, do you guys hear that? My stomach just went nuts. I'm not apple. I'm going to have to eat that again. It's like, Then he, he was really into serial, serial killers, and he moves all the way from Pennsylvania to Washington, the state of Washington, which is, by the way, very similar to what uh, 
Ted Bundy did. And he goes over there and he uh, he's there for just a short amount of time. And then he starts traveling to Moscow, Idaho. Of course, he's out stargazing all those nights that we now hear. So he goes over there and he's utilizing the same resources that the 1122 King Road address uses. He he goes over there, uh, I think, 11 or uh, 12 times, but 11 times it was, it was late at night and one time was just during the day. So he's out there and he's likely probably driving to the 1122 King Road address and stalking the the family. I mean, the, the kids, the four kids. That's what he's doing. But I don't know that he's doing that. Okay, I don't know that he's doing that, everybody. I don't know it. But here's the thing. The only way somebody would know those routes to do the looping that he did is if you've been out there multiple times. Because when I drove out there, I couldn't figure it out for a while, and then I finally go, okay, boom, 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 and then I, and then I could do it without thinking about it. That's exactly what he was doing. Hey, thanks, Oddball. Thanks for thinking of me. And the, uh, you know, so... You had that happen. Then on November 13th, or was it? Was it the 13th? November 20. What day was that now? God, man. I'm November. Shit, my brain. 20. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. I don't remember the date anymore. It was November. God. Do you guys remember the date? That yeah, was the 13th. That's what I was starting to say, but I, my brain didn't let me finish it. You think it was November 30th? Oh, shit. Hold on. Yeah, it was the... Wait, hold on. Yeah, November 13th. I was right. Okay. All right. See, I should have just gone with my, my instinct when I said November 13th. Yeah, so on November uh, 13th, 2022, he... Um, he's driving around in Pullman at like a, at like 244, 4, 2.42, he leaves his house in Pullman, Washington. And we don't need anybody typing in the 13th one more time, okay? Yeah, it's, it's really the, the more early morning hours of the 13th. Thank you, Mary Gonzalez. So he... Well, let me let me just get the map out, you guys. It's so much easier with that. He's right over here at 2.42 in the morning. His phone pings up by his... He lives in these apartments. 2.42, it, it's pinged in the area. So that means it's, uh, you know, his phone's on, it's active. But then his phone pings again sort of down in this area, like 244, down in this area. And then at 247, he turns off his cell phone, but it was seen, the vehicle was seen on camera at 244 right here, and at uh, 253 going this direction. Now, given the new information that we just got in that last document, it's probably likely that he drove just like this and down or went around this loop and then came around and got on to Highway 270, which is the Pullman-Moscow uh, Highway. Then he dra travels this way, and apparently a camera at Floyd's Cannabis Shop sees the vehicle. So I guess what we could do right here, oh, look at that. There's 360-degree cameras right at it. Hold on. I already gave Blue's medicine a few minutes ago. Yeah, so it looks like there might be some cameras, you know, and, and look at that. I mean, a car driving by, you'd be able to see it. Now, there's somebody out there that thought that maybe he went up this other road here. I mean, I guess it's possible. They came up with a theory that he drove up around and that that's what killed the time. You know, I can't say that's not what he did, but... Um, I think he just drove by, and we don't know where he was, but law enforcement might know exactly where he was during that time frame. You know, because when he, when he leaves here at 2.53, so he's hanging out over here. I think he's getting ready. He's 
making sure he's got everything. He's parked. 247, his phone goes off. And then at 253, he's right here, drives around, probably gets down back over to here at like 256. And we know that at 320, 326, which is 30 minutes later, he is seen right here on Indian Hills Drive. But the drive from Pullman to Moscow is only like 15 minutes at the most. I mean, it's like probably 12. So there's 18 minutes of missing time in this area, this in this time frame too, early on. And then at 326 in the morning, a white Elantra, and you know, you might at that time, well, who knows whose that is. All they knew at the time is there was a white Elantra driving around. They tracked it backwards. They were able to, They pro this is what they did. They saw a white Elantra on this camera right here. Then they tracked it backwards. They see it on a Linda Lane camera filming it going this way. Then they go back over here and um, so that road goes like this and down. Then they see it right here at 328 at an A&W. Then they tracked it backwards again. And I think um, there's there might be another camera in this area, but they tracked it around and at 326 it's right here on 700 Indian Hills Drive. So that's how they were able to do it is they tracked it backwards after they initially found the surveillance camera at 1112 King Road, which is right here. No, actually it's right here, sorry. It's right here, this place right here. 1112 King Road, there's a camera on the house. I have video of all of this. But yeah, they blurred it out and everything. So it's like right up there. There's a camera on the side of that house. They blurred out everything here. And um, so that there's a camera that faces this direction and it would film every single car coming in and out. All right, and say no to lulls, everybody. Say no to lulls. We're on one of those benders again. Yeah, so we got the... Uh, yeah, so the first pass that he made, so he takes off at 326, drives around, and we've shown this a million times. If you haven't seen all my videos, you'll have to go out and watch them. There's literally like 50 of them. And, it, and the vehicle comes in, and then like 331 comes back behind here, and then drives right around like this, and then... Uh, right here, and I think he would stop on each pass, and then he leaves. Now, there's some information, like audio files, that it might be that he would go to the right when he left, and then loop back around like this, and then come back in. But either way, he looped around three times initially, and guess what? They know it's a white Elantra. See, that's what it's so bizarre, these wackos out there on the Internet. Like, they don't understand that, yeah, they identified it as a white Elantra because of the camera right here. That's why they say the white Elantra, suspect vehicle one, uh, makes an initial three passes. I know, but I'm talking right now, kitty cat. I don't know if you can tell. It makes the initial three passes, and then it makes a final pass, and what the car does when it comes back in again and that's around 4.05. He comes back in here, uh, drives right back here, turns around, you know, drives this way, backs up like that. Three-point turn there, but that's not the three-point turn they mentioned. Then it drives this way, and in this area, it tries to turn around or park. Can't. Then it drives this way, does a three-point turn, drives back this way again. And maybe he did that because of the DoorDash driver. We don't really know. But he comes back around knowing that the lights are off now, and then he parks here at 4.08, and then at 4.20, the car speeds away. But inside of that time, between 4.08 and 4.20, based on Zana uh, you know, what was that, TikTok she was using, and ordering a DoorDash, the murders happened between 4.08 and 4.20. And then during that time, uh, you know, all, all four victims were murdered, and a knife sheath was left on one of the beds that had uh, Brian Koberger's DNA on it. So that means it verifies 
that the white Elantra driving around, missing its front license plate, by the way, just like his did, um, was his. It's obvious at that point. Right? I mean, the circumstantially, the circumstantial evidence that that's his white Elantra is overwhelming. Yeah, so anyways. Um, and the reason that his phone didn't ping in the area is because he turned it off. <laughs> All right? But one thing that that memorandum or whatever the hell they sent out left out was the fact that the phone was turned on again right down here by Blaine, Idaho off of cell tower right here and it continued to head around and ping off of different towers as it went around then it made its way back up but they want to ignore all of this stuff over here because his phone was off yeah all right anyways i'll put the phone numbers on now that's not what i wanted uh this one there you go there's the phone number all right so now the phone numbers are on. <laughs> I mean, if people want to call in, I mean, I'm in the middle of speaking. It wouldn't be the greatest time to call in. But now it's a good time. And you can call in about whatever the hell you want to call in about. But I'm going to need you guys to help support the channel tonight. All right. I know that the times aren't great, but if you're out there and you're able to, if you're able to, that would be great. And him, huh? Yeah, that's later in the morning, though. They're talking about the time of the killing. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so uh, there's the number up on the screen if you want to call it. Uh, what is that looking eye thing with the question mark, Bob? Nobody knows what that means. He just needed to use their Wi Fi, you bastard. <laughs> Hello, this is Gray. Who's this? Hi, Gray. It's Pebbles. 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 Oh, my God. Where is that Are LG you boom when Are you need you it? Are you live? Because, like, yeah. my internet... Oh, there you go. I Hold am on. Live. I am live. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, you, like, abruptly left the last time I was on there, and... Yeah, it was just... It was I a, thought something happened. It was like a dead as a doornail show, but also I didn't want to say anything, so I just said, oh, we'll just do another show later. So... Well, so you, you did. Do so what's up, Boo? I'm just doing the uh, doing a, doing the call-in part. That's what I wanted to do. Do I need Do I need to donate? Are we good? Well, you don't have to what, to call me. What do you mean? I don't get what you're saying. No, I'm calling. Do you want me to donate more money? I can. <laughs> However, you don't have to give Are me we anything. still talking about that asshole that killed that lady on the road thing? Uh. No, you mean they got the machine gun? No. No, no machine gun. The one you stopped abruptly before the show. Well, that was it. That was the case. Before. That was the one. The guy had a machine gun. He carjacked. He had somebody. a machine I, gun? I already finished the whole thing, though. We gone over the, the press conference I twice. know. Twice, twice. Yeah. For right. God's sakes, I so watched I, it. I wouldn't say it was abruptly. I didn't know it was a machine gun. Yeah. I thought, I thought he just had gunpoint. I didn't. Wow, that's news to me. Anyway, I thought he killed her with an algae bloom, Gray. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Have you had a... Wait, hold on a second. Have you had a couple beers tonight? No, sir. <laughs> Come on. No, sir. No, sir. I am so tired. I'm delirious right now. All right. Okay. I actually did just have a glass of wine. Oh, but, there we go. My, you know, with that, You know what it is? Like you said... Did you? Yeah, you just said I did have a glass of wine. You know what that really means? We cut to the video. That means I got and you're a buzz. Chugging, you're chugging it. Do I have to tell those... you how much weed I smoked today? <laughs> cut that out! Cut it out! <laughs> I knew it, man. I mean, I didn't do that. I'm a good girl. I'm a Christian. Okay, anyway, Christians can drink, right? Hi, freaks. Can I say hi to the freaks? I love your. I love your freaks, Gray. Well, I yeah. love everybody on your show. They're so personable and so, so fun. Anyway, I can't turn my screen back on because I'm talking to you. It will echo. Where are we in this case? Which part are you covering right now? What case? Yeah, what are you talking about? The uh, uh, 
Oh yeah, we're, why are you live? We were why are you live right now? Tell me. <laughs> we're, we're just it's just a call-in show about either like the Idaho Four, Coburg, oh oh okay, or we Sebastian can talk about Rogers anything or whatever. Yeah. Okay, listen, freaks. Tell all your people, tell all your friends to get on Gray Hughes. Get on his his channel. Go to his creative playlist and look up my mother's. Yeah interview he did with Gray, that she did with Gray Hughes, it will mesmerize you. In fact, all them women she was awesome. on that creative playlist are, is off the hook. It will change your world if you are in the situation. Yeah, that was, I, what's anyway, the playlist called? I don't even know what it's called. So, it, 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 the first name, it's a girl's name. I think it's, shit. I wanted to always write this down. But he has a playlist, and it's it starts Shelly. The name is Shelly on it. Mm. If you look under Shelly, it'll be Shelly and all. I think there's three other ladies, and one would be my mother, which is Kathy. Catherine. Yeah. They were all like uh, domestic violence. Is, they were like domestic violence stories that people had. They are all very They're overwhelming yeah. if you're in that situation. It's, it's important, Grace. Especially nowadays, I mean, yeah. so many women are just, I'm sorry, ladies, but you're so dum-dums. <laughs> just stay single, stay single, and get rid of that piece of crap or, or, or find someone who loves you, Yeah, like my mother did, right? Yeah, your mom's awesome. She's still a nurse, right? She's like 80. Mm, yeah, something. she's still working, and she's still with yeah. her husband. Yeah, the second husband. The first and, guy was a pile of crap. The second husband, yep, and yeah. they love, they love. There's, there's nothing but love in that family. Yeah. And she lost all her children but me. And she's still pushing on, Greg. I don't know how she does it. My heart's so People broken People were a little bit tougher. Her. They were a little she tougher is back so then. so tough. Yeah, it was like my, With you know, my mom's like, I mean, they're all, the people from back then <sighs> are just have a different, they're tougher people, you know. Yep. I, I don't know. I don't know. She's got a heart of gold, and she lost all of her siblings but me. I mean, all her babies but me. And I am like, listen, I can't believe I didn't go first because I'm not saying that to be rude. Listen, people, I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to my mother, but I was always so the, what's that, black black-listed child? I was always black so sheep. rotten. Black sheep. Yes, black sheep of the family. And here I am. I can't even comfort her because I'm so heartbroken. And that sucks. Yeah. She, she is she is such my hero. But anyway, y'all need to check that out on Gray's channel, everybody. Y'all really do. All, all, what is it, four or five stories are so mesmerizing. And Gray, I have to give you a kudos. This story tonight, you've covered it so so well. well and thanks. I called and left a message on this number because my phone broke and I lost your other numbers. Oh, you did? I was yeah. going to text you. I thought you died or fell over or something. Jeez. It was so abrupt how you left us. Anyway. No, I just said, hey, that's all I got for you guys. See you guys later. I didn't want to. Yeah, know, bye. I, I so you, went, you didn't even say bye. You went click. I did too. Oh, that's you cool. You didn't even yeah. say bye. No, uh, I, I said... You play half go. a damn dancing song, and then boom, you're done. Yeah. Anyway, listen. Yeah, that's right. Half Ray, this song. story, I this story it. is so twisted, and this story is... Oh, my God. It, it makes my brain bleed when I hear stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And I know it's all because of drugs, which sucks. It, it sucks, you know. In the long run, it's all because of drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah, that's what that's what they even said in the press conference. Two kilos of coke and something Three. else. That's all I got to say. Three. That's all I got to say about it. And then she's dead, and the damn dumpster driver's dead, and and the brother and the husband are getting on her phone. Yeah, you know, it's all about drugs and it's all about cartel. And think about this. The area is, say it again, Gray, area this is all in? 
Oh, it's in Florida. State? Florida. Florida. Oh. And don't you know there's people coming over that border too with all the drugs. There you go. There you go. Come on. Think about it. Think. Listen, if you are not, I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, if you don't think this has something to do with people coming over here and fucking with, excuse me, freaking with our freaking freaks over in Freakville, this is, this is one story I will never, ever forget. And by the way, Florida is florist with algae blooms right now. I'm just saying. Mm. All right. Did you know that? Uh, no. You didn't know that? No. Florida is one of the most algae bloom. Never mind. We ain't going to go there. Oh, algae bloom. Algae oh, bloom okay. central locations in the United States. Yes, it is because of the heat and the water. Yeah. Well, there you go. Do there your you homework, Gray. I told you I looked this shit up. <laughs> you know an elephant died from drinking algae bloom water? An elephant. And they couldn't find any proof of it dying from algae blooms because it came out of his system. But that's what he died from. <laughs> How come them people on that uh, hike? Yeah. I know they got that shit in them. I know they did. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to not go there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But all right. Well, hey. Well, everybody go watch that video of Peb, uh, yes. Peb's... Mom. Please, Shelly on his playlist. Right. It's titled Shelly, and then you'll see many more. And my mom's name's Kathy. Give a comment. I'm trying to answer some comments that are on there lately, but I've been, like, crazy busy. And I'm sure I'm going to get my mom to come and answer with me soon enough. But she's crazy busy. But I love you, Gray, and thank you so much for everything you've done for my mom. For our family, you rock my soul. Well, thank you. You're an awesome person. And you yourself. freak, you freaks rock my soul more. I love you guys. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, have a good Take evening. Take care, Gray. Love, love. Have another glass too. <laughs> we can all Ray? have another glass of that. What? You, what kind of wine are you having? What is it? Um, I got um white. It's, it's a white wine. It's more of a dessert wine, just very sweet. Well, there you um, go. Moscato? Yeah, something like that. All right. Well, anyways. Moscato Sangria. Moscato Sangria. That's well, there you it go. Well, it's delicious. Have a great rest of the evening. All right? Hey, you too, sir. Chat with the freaks. All love, right. love. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, well, I actually just her mom called, and we made it. She... It wasn't a video. She just we just recorded her, and it's just there. The videos are just dark. There's no, there's no. It's, just, it's really an audio file, put on video. Okay. But let's let's do it, you guys. Put all your minds together and help support the channel tonight. Let's see if there's any chance at all to get somewhere near something. That would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, gift of time. Gift of time. You must be a new person. Got a lot of people that get the free uh, memberships. I got a lot of freaks that give them away. Well, this might be another short show. Nobody's calling in. Dead as a door now. What? So, anyways, that uh, document that the defense team just put out the other day, uh, the other day was a pile of crap. Okay. Complete pile of shit. Hello. Hi, Gray. Hello, who's this? This is Debbie. Debbie? You gotta turn down the audio yeah. in the background. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I have it turned down. I'm sorry. Um, 
I was just wondering, do you think this Brian Koberger, this is the first time he's killed? Uh, yeah, I probably think it is. I mean, I know a lot of people want to think, oh, he's out there killing other people, but I think it was kind of like he finally planned it all, and he thought he had it all figured out with his schooling, and he goes out there. I mean, he may have killed somebody else, like, to see what it was like or something, but I don't know. You know, there's, I haven't seen anything pointing to that. It just, I mean, it's just a lot. I, I was just curious. I, it's just strange. <laughs> it's just strange thing. And then the girl down the street, I think it was, I read something about it two or three months before um, her car had been gone through. And so I just wondered if he was kind of stalking in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Parker. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he was obviously stalking around in this case, but um, I don't, I don't think he killed anybody else. I mean, I just my opinion. He could have killed somebody, but he's pretty young too. Like uh, he's probably about the age usually your, your first kill at a, as a serial killer. I mean, I think he was going to try to continue doing the killing. Like I don't think this was a one-time thing that he was going to do. I think he was going to. I mean, I, I have this sort of a theory that he was going to try to be like a, like a, I don't know what you call, like, I think it was going to be called Koberger the K-Bar Killer, you know, like he was going to be leaving, if he left the knife sheath uh, intentionally, you know, it, was, it, it could go either way for me, the knife sheath. If he left it there intentionally, he may have left it there as a signature and he thought he cleaned it really well. But he missed a spot right underneath the button clasp. But there was no other single source DNA on that entire sheath other than that spot. So he may have thought that he cleaned it nice. He was going to leave it there. And he was going to leave. And maybe it wasn't always going to be a K-bar knife sheath. Maybe at every time he did a killing, he'd leave something associated with the weapon behind. You know, maybe something like that, you know. And this was going to be his well, first. And he was going to move on to the next one. But he... He didn't do it well enough. He got—he was stupid. Well, yeah, because he was studying that, all the different serial killers. So, yeah. that is true. He could have been trying to think he's so smart and left that. Mm -hmm. That is—that's a good thought. Yeah, I mean that's what—that's really what it—that's what—that's what I thought of. I mean, but it could just be. I mean, there's different theories that make it so that you know for example to me it seems like he confronted uh, Zana Kernodal twice you know uh, and in that case you would think he went back upstairs looking for the knife sheath and couldn't find it and then he went back down and heard that Zana was still whimpering and said it's okay, I'm here to help you, and then finished her off. So that would mean that the knife sheath wasn't left intentionally in that scenario, and he went back up to get it. All right. Either one yeah. of them works, though, actually. Well, I know. E either story works, but I, I don't know which one right. is. Well, the other story, I don't know how to make it so. In the other version, because here's the thing, when... Um, let's see. Somebody says somebody's here. Anyways, that part doesn't really even matter. It's the part where he comes back and he says, it's okay, I'm here to help you. He wouldn't say that on the first time he attacked them. That's stupid because there's nobody in trouble. What are you helping right. them with? Right? You're, what are you helping them with? Exactly. That means somebody's already injured when he comes back and he says that. It's almost like somebody survived his first attack. Then he left and then came back because he heard them and he didn't want to leave any survivors. You know? So that's what that's how that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I like the fact that you are logical. I've watched a lot of your videos and I like the fact that you're logical when you go through the cases. I appreciate that. It makes well, it helpful.
Yeah, some people hate that, though. They like to just ruminate about every ridiculous... I, I, I just can't do it, man. That's just not the way I am. I think I think more like a detective thinks, where you go with the factual pieces of information and work through it, put the pieces of the puzzle together, and where is this leading us, and then boom. That's why we're really accurate on this channel. Now, people always go, Gray, yeah. you're not... Right. No, we are, man. If you guys look back in time, we are absolutely... Like, very accurate in the predictions and figuring out what's going on. Yes, because it's kind of like with the Sebastian thing. I, I, for the life of me, don't understand why people are picking sides. It's yeah, it's stupid. crazy to it's me. Stupid. It's like, you don't know what you will do if your child is missing. So to pick apart, oh, they're sitting like this, or they have their head like that, or it's, that's crazy to me. It's it's like, get to the fact. Yeah. People, and, well, here, here's what the, the truth is, is there were very irresponsible uh, YouTubers early on in the Sebastian Rogers case that pretty much convicted the... Um, Proudfoot's right away just told every one of their yeah you know, they're one of those live streamers sensationalistic idiots that has like 5,000 people watching and there's like three of those people and all of those people did was trash the Proudfoot's over and over and over again and so everybody's perception because these people watching for some reason believe that those guys have special insight into something in reality, they're just yahoos that were sitting at home one day and said, wow, and then clicked the live stream button, and then everybody went, ooh. Those people don't have a clue what they're doing, okay? So all these people on social media who pretend that they're really smart and can think really well and stuff like that, they believed everything that these guys said, even though there's nothing that they observed that pointed to anything, all right? I'm not saying it's not possible that something and in, in the future might point to some somewhere, but there's been nothing to point to anywhere in that case. And law enforcement even said that. They have no information that points to foul play on the part of anybody. That's it. Okay? That's all they have. So unless there's something that points to that, their behavior was irresponsible. So what that created was an atmosphere of absolute hate for the Proudfoots who never really ever in this case got to enjoy a moment where the public was behind them, uh, willing to go out and search and help and look for them. Uh, it was just good old Seth, boy. What a great man. One of the greatest human beings on the face of the earth um, who didn't want to have his son back even after he thought that his wife allowed his son to be abused. He didn't want his son back. Oh, and by the way, he was, fell asleep during his lie detector test. And so here's the thing, everybody. It's like, who cares? You know, that's what's weird about it to me is the, <laughs> if it was in reverse, for example, if Seth was the stepfather and acted the same way he's acting, oh my God, he would have been trashed into oblivion. All right? And then, then you've got the uh, Chris Proudfoot who didn't want to take the lie detector test he wanted to, but then he asked the police, should I take the one that Nancy Grace has? And they told him, no. And he goes, well, I'll take one with you guys. So then he took one with them, and he passed. But we all know lie detector tests can't be used in court, so they're not really, really incredibly significant. However, had he not passed the one with the police, everybody would have went, oh, my God, everybody, look how guilty he is. But now that he's passed, they'll say, well, those things aren't reliable. You know, <laughs> I think it's I just know, sucks, it, everybody. It's just... I, I think it's horrific that we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, and but it's I okay have to no have no idea, uh, yeah, at all about any of those three people. I don't know them personally. They they don't live next door to me. I don't know them. So, and to me, I would think people would be more interested in what happened to this kid. It, I mean, 
the dog tracting to the construction site. So is there a predator out there that lured him there? Yeah, maybe. I mean, we we don't That's, really know what ha- what's going on. I mean, who out. knows? Yeah. Or did yeah. he just... I mean, he's 15. Did he just go for a walk and get lost? Or I mean, there's a million things. Who knows? But it's it's like more trash the parents than what happened to the kid. Yeah. See, like people like Brenda in New York says... When did Katie and Chris search for Sebastian? I don't believe they have. Well, he said that they did. They just went to places where, you know, with law enforcement, whatever, to places where they were going to look. But the the reality is, is would you even, if you had the people like you and other people who hate them so much, would you even want to be anywhere near this town? I mean, I know that your kids are gone missing, so you'd like to stay there. But Chris Proudfoot had to go work. And there's a lot of people in here. Zozo says it all the time. People can work for their own. You know, so the thing is, is he has to go work because there's nobody giving them anything on a charity or anything because they everybody hates them so much. So he has to go work to pay for the mortgage of the house. So that means that Katie was going to be left at home with a bunch of psychos running around, those live stream wackos running around outside their door screaming and yelling and calling him every name of the sun. So she goes, I'm going to get the hell out of here. She goes and takes off and goes and hangs out with her husband somewhere else. Be- uh, uh, let me ask any of you out there. Don't go, if my kid was missing, I wouldn't leave. You don't know what the hell you would do if you had a whole community of whack jobs attacking you day after day after day. You don't know what you would do. Uh, alone in your house, with nobody else, okay? You guys are ridiculous. Embarrassing when you say that shit. All right. <laughs> I think it sucks when people go, oh man, how dare her leave the house? <laughs> I mean, give me a break. With the hate-filled shit that the people have been saying, why in the hell would she ever want to stay there? Good Lord. It's, a, it's, hor- it's horrendous, you know? It is, and and again, I have. Right, Sandy, I don't know you're so great, Sandy. People. You're the greatest, Sandy. And I do not think at all anyone anywhere leave your son. Should go to people's homes or threaten them or do things like that, regardless. Mm-hmm. I I don't I. I Brian Koberger, his, his, no one should go to his family's house. Nobody should do whatever. I mean, it's that's why we have courts. That's why we have jails. That's why we have law enforcement. Those are the people that are supposed to do things. You shouldn't ever go to anyone's home or threaten their lives or anything else Mm -hmm. yeah not based on what you personally think because you don't know yeah i mean here's the thing it's it's okay to for people to speculate and say god i wonder if this person did something or it's when it's when they say out loud like this person did it you know and that's exactly what all these guys did all these guys did it look at that oh look at that look at the way she's looking over there it just sucks you know I mean, the whole thing. Exactly. It's embarrassing. It's like the Madeline Soto case. Mm-hmm. I, the first interview, I was like, they seem strange. But in a million years, I would have never dreamed that he would have been doing that to that little girl. Mm-hmm. That was not, when I saw that, I, the first thing in my head wasn't, oh, well, he's been abusing her. That didn't, that wasn't my first thought. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you just, you don't know till you know. You have to give law enforcement time to do what they do. Yep. All right. Well, Well, I appreciate it, and thank you for... 
my call. Well, thanks for calling. I think we're on the same page. All right. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And just FYI, you just popped up in my YouTube feed one day, and uh, your sarcasm <laughs> gave me a giggle. So yeah, that's, that's why I people started like watching that. it. People like that. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Call back again <laughs> All right. Sometime. Have a good night. Right, Thank good you. Night. Bye-bye. Bye. And by the way, thanks to, uh, I guess it's, uh, I'm not sure what that means, any needs, but uh, Lara, I guess it's how you pronounce it, but thank you very much for the the kind PayPal there. Thank you so much. Wasn't sure what that other part, uh, any needs, is that, is that your name at the end there? Or is that, what is that? I don't want to say that name. Is that a case? Or is that your real name? <laughs> or is that your chat name, I guess? Yeah. Anyways, thank you. Um, I, I don't know. This, this case is one of those ones that reminds me of Heidi Broussard. And it reminds me of the case in... Australia tremendously okay and I know you guys are like oh that's you okay well thank you so much uh, Malia there you go <laughs> well thank you that was very kind to of you very generous it's it's so similar though Especially that Australian case, you know, that family sitting there. Everybody's like, oh, God, look at that. Look at the way that one, he's looking at her. Look at the... And boy, they're... Yeah, Cleo Smith. They were guilty as hell. Everybody had him, you know, just uh, completely convicted, and they had absolutely nothing to do with anything. It was some uh, native Australian aborigine person who went to their tent, stole the child, brought him back to his house, and... They somehow tracked her down and they saved her. I mean, they had nothing to do with anything. Okay, but to me, it reminds me of that case. And all I can say, you guys, is this. Is that I've talked to him twice on the phone. And one, one of them was like 50 minutes. You know, working through, like literally, can you imagine? Like somebody actually being guilty and then working through a map with you for hours. <laughs> Hello, this is Gray. Ah, oh, Jesus. Hello. Hi, Gray. Hey, who's this? This is Aaron. Uh, Aaron? Aaron. Oh, e Aaron. Oh, hey, what's going on? I missed most of your show, but I wondered if you went over the the new update in the Caleb Harris case. Uh, what's the new up uh, today? There was one. No, um, Tony, the spokesperson for the family yeah. that's helping out the dad, uh -huh. he went on um, a TikTok live. Um, I think either last night or the night before, and added a new, like someone well, came forward and spotted him. Um, at three forty. That, yeah, that was turned out. They debunked that. They said it's not him. Oh, already? Yeah, yeah. I saw them say that they that wasn't him at three forty. I think we were on the right track when uh, we uh, found out that he was on. Well, somebody else found that out, but we looked deeper into it than just looking at that. That he was on Reddit. And he actually asked somebody to meet him that very same night at like 2, uh, I think it was like 2.20 in the morning. He asked somebody to meet him over at a park. And that's when he posted, so he posted that at 2.20. So he likely probably got a reply, and that's going to be related to why he's missing. I would be shocked if it has anything other than to do with that. That seems... Way too coincidental. Yeah, I really appreciated your video on that. Mm -hmm. um, it really gave a timeline. I, um, but that's why I was confused when they said he was going the other way at 
340. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it sounds like that. I think uh, they, okay. I saw somewhere where they just it, said it didn't happen. Like, it wasn't him. Something like that. Oh, I don't know why they would give that update. It just seems like there's been nothing. Um, but maybe the mm -hmm. it's a good sign that the police are on to something. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I just think they're, they're on to something would mean that they're going to go down that social media route. I mean, if it's not yeah. related to that, wow, what are the odds that he makes a post seeking a sexual partner at like two something in the morning and then he at three ish, you know, three twelve, he's right there and he's leaving the area. Come on, it's got to be. That's crazy. Well, and the three forty ping that they that you said that is debunked didn't make sense because his phone was already off by then, or the no, not the ping, the um, the sighting. Mm -hmm. That's what I was confused about because why would his phone turn? Well, his phone. It seems like. Everything got to happen when the phone went dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, his phone goes dead, but it was before that, right? It wasn't at, what time was it, 3 something when he did the TikTok video? I can't remember now. Yeah. I have to go find the timeline. Yeah. But, but um, I don't know if we're... Um, but the spokesperson came on like two nights ago and said that someone came forward and spotted him yeah. walking the dog at 3.40, mm -hmm. which is so weird because how would the dog get back after that? I don't know. Yeah, no, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> the dog was already back. That's why it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Remember? How well, did... thank you, yeah. and thank you for all your coverages on all the cases. Well, thank you. All right. Have a good all night. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Yep. All right, freaks, we're struggling again tonight. So if you're out there and you'd like to help support the channel and help Gray Hughes Investigates channel out, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. And it doesn't have to be $50. It doesn't have to be $10, $20. It could be $2, 5 whatever it is. If you feel like you, you can afford it, then you can. But this channel relies on the income on the live streams as there is no ad revenue on these live streams, okay? So that's it. And the all the great stuff that we do is based off of what you guys do to help support the channel. And the ad revenue that I make on videos is also part of that as well. Yeah, I think I did do a pretty good video on that one. I guess it, her name was pronounced like Sade or something, even though it's S-A-D-E. And thank you for the call. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Did you guys see that too? Where, oh, there it is. Let's see. Now, that was three weeks ago. News channel. Now, that says 340. Mm-hmm. Well, we already covered it, though. And we already mentioned. Oh, by the way, yeah, like all, all there was, the only update in that case was that there was a... Uh, I can't re now I'm trying to remember where that was located. Oh, there it is. Sade Robinson. I know it was on. Yeah, there you go. Right here. Yeah, so remember how, remember down here at the water pump, they found the right leg. And it wasn't really decomposed, so it just been. And I think in that spot, a whole bunch of body parts were put in the water, because apparently, a torso and an arm floated down to this area right here. So that's the update. I guess nobody heard my public service announcement. Yet again. Yeah, the dismembered body. Yeah. We went through the whole thing. We went through the probable cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird how people are in here and they go, oh, wow, this is crazy. Like, we covered the whole thing. I mean, people should be watching this channel. We, we don't just do one case over and over and over and over and over again. 
you know we we cover tons and tons of different cases and it's always like these people are like oh wow because everybody gets so stuck on okay it's so easy for me to just to go watch another sebastian rogers live stream over and over and over again learning nothing instead of trying to get on to something different or new uh, well i'll look at that another time zozo i don't know which one you're talking about his dad has hired private investigators to, uh, and search teams. Mm -hmm. Time to blame everybody for missing any of my episodes. <laughs> uh, you got these stupid fools that always create these accounts. They're so dumb, you know. But it's true, you know, it's like we cover so many things and people just show up and it's like, wow, this is crazy. It's like, what, what do you mean? We've gone three shows on this. Did you miss that or? I don't know why you always had a lag. Mm hmm Jeez. <laughs> Brutal again. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, that that, that uh, image they're using is a trademarked image too. <laughs> Oops. And having to do the replay crew thing. Yeah, that's okay. I, I'm just saying. It's just it's funny though, like. Check in every once in a while, you guys. We cover all kinds of stuff. We are the ones covering the Seminole County case. Nobody else is really doing that one. We are doing, we did, we were the first ones to do the two women missing in Oklahoma, basically. And now everybody's doing that one. Uh, we covered this one, a crazy case of the probable cause is absolutely nuts in this one. I mean, the guy's driving around. He's got like, I mean, he took her car, smashed it through a fence, obviously cut her body up into parts and put it in the water. I mean, I don't know if he's a serial killer. It was a date. Hey, thanks, Leah Baker. Murder of Boston police officer John O'Keefe. Yeah, we covered that one, too. Yeah. yeah, we've done that one. We did a whole night on that, and I think we just kind of got where everybody else is, and there's really not much more to go. Right, you guys? Yeah, I mean, like we covered that for a whole night and went through the whole thing and got right to where everybody is stuck on, you know, I could see that one uh, either way, really. Uh, I mean, it seems more li like, I mean, here's the thing. You have to believe in a cover-up conspiracy. I just don't think there was any malintent anywhere. I think it's crazy to charge her with first-degree murder. It should just be like, uh, you know, how about like reckless, you know, like when you're drunk driving type of thing. Maybe if you could come up with something like that, but to sit there and try to get her on first degree, I mean, that's just stupid, you know. Thanks, Heather N. Yeah, I know it's still going on. Yeah. it's It reminds me of the Delphi case quite a bit in terms of the maneuvering done. A lot of wild stuff. I don't think there's any. I don't. No, it's not second degree murder. I don't think she intentionally hit him at all. <laughs> you know, I, as a matter of fact, it's hard to even see that she hit him because her car had so little damage on it that you, to have that little damage, how would it actually end up killing somebody? Doesn't even make any sense. It's crazy. But I don't really have, you know. It's one of those cases where you have to be on a certain side or nobody wants to watch your shows. So it's not one of those ones I like to. Right. We we talked about that earlier, Zozo. Yeah. His school is broken. It doesn't. Yeah, I, it just doesn't. A lot of stuff doesn't make a lot of sense in that one. I think the trial will be interesting. 
but I don't feel like talking about it anymore because I've already gone over all this stuff. But... Hello, this is Gray. Hi, Gray. It's Pebs again. I knew it. So I knew sorry. it. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. What's going on? But we need entertainment, right? Well, no, we were right in the middle of talking about stuff. I can see it. I know we were. Well, what's the entertainment? You were talking about cases that you never covered. Um, Weren't you? No, no, I've talked about all, I've covered all those ones. The ones you never covered? Really? No, I never really? said that. I said I covered all the ones that people don't think, you know, like I covered to Karen. Oh, and right on, on, right on. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I misunderstood you. And I didn't mean to call back, but there's a really <laughs> cool case that you didn't cover. Well, what's that one? And it is, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's in a little town in Pennsylvania. Chief of police. Mm -hmm. ran everything was the boost of the boost right and he always did the firework things because yeah. he was a pyro whatever maniac blew his hand off blew his arm off and everybody was so upset when he did that only to find out that he's a child predator mm -hmm. so you never covered that one and I think it needs more covered because he is now out of jail. Well, why don't you send me an email on that one? Um, okay. After the show. After the I show. mean, I can't. I can't. Listen, I have been looking locally in the news. I can't really find. I think they're covering it up because I can't find any prominent news on it. I hear the same thing I just told you on the news. Yeah. But there's no about he was in prison for this long. He violated his probation, went back to prison. Now, at this point, he's out of prison. And this upsets me because he lives 100 yards from a school. No, it sounds like where they normally live. Hey, let's sing um, 100 bottles of beer on the wall, okay? 99 bottles of wine on the wall. <laughs> do wine. 99 do wine. bottles of wine. You take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles Goodbye. of beer. <laughs> Goodbye, Gray. I love you. Bye, All freaks. Right. You love later. you. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Pebs W. The legend. Yeah. Does anyone watch the actual full trials as I do? Some people do. I just don't really have the time to do that, really. If it was a case that I've been covering, like if the Delphi case was... I might actually try to go to that one. But if the, uh, you know, if that was being televised, I would televise every second of that case. I think it's just so boring, you know, a lot of times. You know, you, you guys are just sitting there and you're just sort of like chatting away. I think what people like about it is just all these people that you're chatting with. Because there's like 90% of the time nobody's saying anything. Or 50%. Like there's an eight hour day of trial. You can condense it down into like three hours and 50 minutes. There's just so much of nothingness. It's a little bit like the NFL, you know. After every play, uh, you know, you sit around talking for 20 minutes and then, oh, then there's another play. It's not true, Gray. The time between the... Okay, I was being sarcastic. I, I find the entire thing to be I like the opening arguments closing arguments and some of the stuff in between but man sometimes it's just whew, whoa nobody I don't know how you find time for that I mean I think it sucks too because you try to do a show during the daybell case the uh, a mi an absolute the same trial as another one that already happened with Lori and you can't get anybody to watch yours because they're all just staring at the screen at the case that they already know. It's Look at Chad Daybell is going to be found guilty. I bet you he does not get the death penalty, though, because they won't be able to prove that he actually literally physically killed one of the kids. So he'll probably get life without parole. That's what my prediction is going to be. If he gets the death penalty, then he gets the death penalty. But I think it'll probably end up being... Uh, Uh, fire loin text. I don't even know. I don't even remember any of that shit. I don't even care. God, I'm just so done with that. You know, I got done with it once too many people started covering it. It got to the point where it's like you couldn't even, you know, 
like you're covering the case from the beginning and you're getting these interviews and stuff but somehow on YouTube nobody knows they just don't know that you're doing it and then all these Tom Dick and Harry start covering it and they get all the views and then it's like why do it again it doesn't work it doesn't uh, really frustrating I don't know how YouTube determines that kind of stuff it almost seems like they have a little bit of uh, little bias in how they do things certain people I think they're trying to prove well I mean he just said that they're zombies and of course he ruled that they're if you're a zombie if you kill the physical body then it frees the soul that's in limbo you know so maybe he, yeah, I mean I guess that would be a good way to make the argument is that his doctrine that he put into motion and they followed led to the deaths and he knew that and he was okay with that I mean I, I think they could easily sell it you know like with the tire in the Jeep when they were trying to kill Brandon Boudreau and he's moving the seat and the tire back and forth to the storage unit yeah yeah I don't know anything about fire loin never even heard of that in this case oh yeah well I'd like to what what uh, give me the your, I couldn't find what you were talking about yesterday I even looked at the right day in the last 10 minutes and there was no arguing or anything so you know you'd have to tell me in what time in the trial they were talking about the the loin fire text and then I'll go watch it but if I don't get that I'm not gonna go try to find it may hey, welcome Quinta Quinta Huggins sweet yeah I'm sure you do revenge I'm sure you do uh, loin cortex was done I'm not sure what that means what does that mean loin cortex was done a full year ago what what does that mean God right sounds like they needed some antibiotics for that one hey uh, Cindy let me just do the show okay I don't need you to you know <laughs> you always do this you like try to like get instigate things why don't you call in oh Jesus here we go everybody here we go on Rachel Morin case here I keep asking well it, I don't know when the updates gonna be well you can just type in the questions right well type in the question Revengeance? Where is it? Have you, would you cover Alyssa Taylor? I don't know. Is that a new case or what is it? Yeah, super chat the questions in, Revengeance. Let me hear, let me see what you got. Saying uh, Lake and Riley's killer was released. Was he really? No way. See, that's how lame our government is. Wait, what? Is that really? That can't be true. Now he was paroled illegally before. He had been released over lack of detention space. <laughs> oh shit. For something else that he did. That's what it was. Yeah, that was before, not now. He's they didn't let him out now. They he, he just got let out before, and that's why he was able to kill. Where is it, Revengeance? Well, I'm waiting for the question. Uh, 
Oh god, another troll over and over and over again. He should have released right back. Thank goodness I was going to say. Man, you guys, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that one. The bus aid. So Revenge Inside questions and then he just took off without ans asking the questions. <laughs> All I was waiting for him was to type in the questions. Are they trying to say Koberger actually stopped at Wawawe Park or did he just drive by there? Well, they said that he would visit there sometimes and they said that um, he went there that night. Uh, I guess we could go take a look at that again. But you know, combining both shows, we're only at like 60%, you guys, of a normal, just random night. Isn't that scary? So let's see, here we go. Brian Koger, by and through his attorney of record, Ann C. Taylor, public defender, Mr. Koberg removed, uh, let's just go to the next page. Mr. Koberg was busy with classes, a uh, lot of yada, 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 yada. And then, Mr. Koberger intends to offer testimony of Cy Ray, CSLI expert. Oh, yeah, it's up here, though. It says, Mr. Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, as he often did, to hike and run or see the moon and stars. He drove throughout the area, south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawawe Park. So maybe he just drove by there, they're saying. It says he drove throughout the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawawe Park. Mr. Koberger intends to offer testimony by Cy Ray, CSLI expert, a person who's been discredited uh, multiple times um, because his information is inaccurate, to show that Brian Koberger's mobile device was south of Pullman, Washington, and west of Moscow, Idaho on November 13, 2022. Hey, thanks, Lil Barb. 11 months, thank you. Uh, let's see. Mobile device was south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, on November 13th. That Brian Koberger's mobile device did not travel east of the Moscow-Pullman Highway. See, let me just read to you what it's saying here while looking at the map. Okay, I think that's probably a good way to do this. All right, so we're going to go right over here. Here, let me, let me turn off a lot of this crap. It's too much. I mean, I could just turn it off. Anyway, so here is Pullman, Washington right here, and here's Moscow, Idaho. Remember, at 2.47, he turned his phone off in Pullman, Washington. He turned it off over here. So over here he's saying, the uh, device was south of Pullman. So now he's saying, like, over here, I guess we could just draw it, right? Like, here is Pullman. So he's saying, uh, as he often did to hike, he drove throughout the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawawe Park. So he's saying, like, down in this area, basically. He's kind of kind of trying to make it seem like this. Because that park's right over here somewhere, I think. You know, he, he's trying to make it seem like over here, like that's where he was. I don't know. I'll just kind of just draw it.
Do I have to like dance a jig or something, you guys, to get you to help support the channel tonight? What do I need to do? Like jump up and down uh, with my scratching my head, uh, something. So there's Wawawe Park. This is Pullman right here. So he's saying he's west of Moscow. So over here and then over there. But he never was over here, which is total bullcrap, right? It's total bullcrap. He turned his phone off in Pullman. And he, they, always, they kept forgetting that his phone pinged near Blaine over here on the way out. Okay, so at that point, see, you could still say, though, if his phone pinged in this area, it's a little bit west, okay, and then and you sort of make it seem like he's never over there. But it, his phone also continued to ping all the way through and across. Yeah, so that's the actual route that he that law enforcement has him taking right there. So I guess jumping up and down, doing a jig isn't going to work either. And then over here it says... Uh, the vice was south of Pullman, so down here somewhere, and west of Moscow, which is over here too, on November 13, 2022, that Brian Koberger's mobile device did not travel east of Moscow, Pullman Highway, so it did not travel east on the Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th, and thus could not be the vehicle captured on the video along the Moscow Pullman Highway near Floyd Cannabis Shop. Right, and so that's the, well, I guess I'll have to just turn it all back on. I don't know where that is. Yeah, so Floyd's Cannabis Shop is here. So in that morning when he drove like this, he drove, and then he, um, they're saying that can't be him because he never traveled in that area, but but they're but they're not taking into account is that he turned his phone off. Okay, it's ridiculous, it's crazy. Now, my attitude is just fine. It's it's absolutely fine. What what sucks is you. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I'm doing my shows exactly the same way that I've always done them, and I don't know why it's any different tonight than it is yesterday or the day before that, or the day before that. No idea. I always do the same. Maybe I'll just play that for you guys. Maybe that'll help. I, I don't know. If his phone turns off, it's not going over there. Maybe we'll just keep playing it over and over and over. say that it does say that but anyways of course his phone isn't it's not going to be show that he's over here because he turned his phone off okay however it proves that he is over here <laughs> okay because his white elantra is driving around and he left dna at the house right when a, a white elantra was parked outside Right, exactly. It's just it's just a garbage document. You know what's weird is that there's the Koberger groupies, they literally think this is a really important document, that it means something. Hey, thanks. Hi, Esther here and Revengeance. Hey, let's turn that back on. Man, that seemed to be working. <laughs> Revengeance said so the wording is inferior. Yeah, so look at down here. It says additional information as to Mr. Koberger's whereabouts as as the early 
Look how stupid this part is. Additional information as to, and I brought this up on Court TV, as to Mr. Koberger's whereabouts, as the early morning hours progress, including additional analysis by Mr. Ray, will be provided once the state provides discovery requested. <laughs> Meaning, um, you'll make sure that you have a great story to tell once they give you the discovery, because that's what your software does, right? It just sort of, whatever they need it to say, by God, it'll say. Hey, tell me what you think he did. Okay, great. Oh, look at those circles. Okay, concentric circles here and here. Oh, there, there he was. It's stupid. Additional information. So I'll, we'll, what he's really saying is we'll give you more information about his alibi as soon as you give us more discovery so we can invent more stuff. If you don't do that, we'll tell everybody that you didn't give us critical information that would have excluded Koberger from the murders. <laughs> it's like a threat. It's just stupid. I mean, you know, not to be mean, but it, it reminds me of Dr. B uh, Baden now. Every single case almost that he's hired as the second autopsy, it miraculously, miraculously comes back matching what the people who paid him want it to sound like. Now, oh, that's, uh, there's that hyoid bone, everybody. And by the way, say hyoid bone three times fast. We've done that a thousand times. None of you can do it. I did great, you bastard. I really did. I said it perfectly. And by the way, thanks again to um, uh, Malie Uma. That was very kind, very kind. The one and only PayPal, the one and only any other thing other than YouTube today. Uh, let's see. You don't know if camera or not on the park. Cindy J. What do you mean? Cindy, you don't know? What do you mean? <laughs> Did, were you reading? Were you typing, uh, talking into the phone? Serious Black? I mean, that's kind of weird. If you said you don't know, but it says, hey, you don't know. And it's like, oh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. What a weird autocorrect that is. Well, I know this case. I think I know this case better than all the people out there. And yes, I'm going at it from the uh, probable cause side and all of the other stuff that's come in. There is no Brent Kopaka. There isn't some weird uh, security guard driving around with a different vehicle that the three loops are actually a different vehicle. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that all the crazy wackos want to sell people out there, Jennifer. I hope you're not one of those wackos, okay? All right. Oh, God, is it, this isn't Pebs again, is it? Hello? Hello? Is this Pebs? Gray, it's me again. I know. Sorry. It won't, it <laughs> won't let me send you the chief of police thing you asked for but i sent you an email on it that's all i can do okay yeah so i'll check it out I'll it, check it out. It, it's a really cool story i think you'll like it <laughs> i'll check it out bye it. All right, love love one. see you later bye bye mm. Okay, what, what are your questions, Jennifer? Ask your questions. Ask them away. Go ahead. Man, I, I just, to me, it's the most obvious case on the planet. It's ridiculous. Jesus, it's embarrassing. So go ahead. What, what are the questions? What do we got? Why is it still confusing to some? Yeah, that's because there's, no, there's nothing new, Jared. I put out a ton of video. I have like uh, 50 videos on this case, and they're all better than everybody else's. Okay, I'm sorry to sound braggadocious, but uh, they just are. They are factual. I literally drove around in my vehicle doing the exact same drive that they have out there, and it's crazy. All right, so if you like listening to a bunch of 
absolute nonsensical drivel, then watch somebody else. It's not going to be me. Yes, Farouk Assault. Yes. I don't have any more to do. What's your question now? Go ahead. Give me the questions. <whistles> Come on, Jennifer. Uh, knock out the first one. Let's go. Any day now. Jennifer Lynn asks, it may be obvious to you, I have two jobs, so I'm just curious about how one guy could get up the nerve, <laughs> please God, no, to get up the nerve to go into a house he's never been in, but several cars in the driveway. You mean just like every other killer out there? There's so many of them. It's almost ridiculous. He waited till four in the morning when the lights were off. He thought he could sneak up casually upstairs and kill. But there was too much noise, don't you see? I mean, what do you mean by that? That question is... I mean, I don't, I don't know how to answer that one, Jennifer, for you. I, I don't, because to me, it's just so, it's just like, how does somebody get up the nerve? I don't know. He's a psycho. They, people do this all the time. These kind of murders and killings. I mean, what's the other question? I mean, let's get to one that's more like, you know, factual. Uh, maybe he had a... a he slammed an old English 800 right beforehand. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it was risky at all. 4.30 in the morning, he goes into the house with the lights off. I mean, four, not 4.30, 4.08. He goes in there. People are all drunk. The Uber the Uber Eats driver, you know, if he saw him, had already was already gone. He was just going to walk upstairs, do what he was going to do. Anybody else? I mean, I want, like, when you say so many questions. I've done videos on, that's called uh, Nine Minutes of Hell, but it could actually be seven minutes. I did seven minutes of hell, I think. Another one. It's a huge amount of time. The murders easily could have happened in that. I mean, you're almost waiting like, God, man, that's too long as you're visualizing it. All right, what other questions you got there, Jennifer? Anything else? Nobody, nobody is putting words in your mouth, uh, Jennifer. That was your own brain doing that. I never once said you thought he was innocent. Uh, Lord have mercy, it was the algae drugs. Must have been. I mean, it's amazing that people haven't seen those videos, but yet a clown and a guy from Scotland, everybody sees their videos every freaking day on the same case. What's wrong with YouTube, everybody? What's wrong with YouTube? I'm becoming disillusioned by it all. We don't know if he saw the door to he saw the light may, might be on but it was go time buddy Madison Mogan's light was off so he was gonna go in there and he was gonna go upstairs and kill but when he came down somebody said there's somebody here and they saw him all these kids all these knife attacks in Australia recently yeah I've seen those pretty wild 
They should ban knives in Australia. They have strict knife law, knife laws in Australia too, apparently. Yeah, I did. I'm just not covering that one tonight, Pips. Okay, I saw it. I'm not, I'm not touching that one. Yeah, like I said before, early in the show, he did four loops watching and waiting, waiting for the lights to turn off, starting at 3.30. And then on his final pass at 3.57, he may have seen the lights go off. But he thought, let me just kill some more time. So he drove away, and he came back at 4.05, and he may have seen a car pulling away and maybe Zana Carnotal's light on or something. But then he drove around and he drove around and he still saw that their light was off and still went for it. You know, it's a party house. People are drunk that night. He thought he could get away with it anyways. It also could have just been that he was going to go there and kill everybody in that house. But plans changed after, uh, you know, he had to fight Ethan Chapin, etc. Uh, what's a crankster? Very confident that he was on some kind of amphetamines. Oh, I don't know. Hard to say. He did like drugs. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I remember the drinking tickets. At the time of the murders, it shows. Yeah, we already went. We already showed that the other day. Little puppy paws. I already showed that on the show. The the still frame of it being foggy outside. Well, he did. I mean, I mean, wait, listen. <laughs> I don't think it makes him an idiot for not waiting longer. That's why he was able to kill four people. They were absolutely... Um, look at Madison Mogan was very intoxicated. Kaylee was mildly... You know, she was drunk, but not like, you know, falling over. Madison Mogan had a hard time standing up. She's a lot thinner. Probably, you know, can't hold the alcohol that well. And, you know, so he went in there, and I think it was... Even though Kaylee fought back, it was easy for him to kill both of them. He's absolutely sober on a mission. And, you know, maybe he went in there to just, he was going to assault her, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Because he's aware of DNA, etc. I think he went there to kill. And that was it. That's why he had that knife with him. Well, we know who this is again. He's back at it again. Guess we'll have to send another cease and desist letter out. Can't believe this was the best they could do after 14 months. Yeah, I know. I know who this one is. They do the same thing. They go every every six months or so. They just kind of can't control themselves. They're almost obsessed. I'm sure they have a picture of me up on the ceiling, above their bed. You know what I mean? Pretty wild. I just want to know, was I wearing a red shirt or was it the black one that I wear sometimes? Well, that took a ominous turn, 8675309. Thank you. Jesus. I think he went back in the morning at 9 to check out his handiwork and was actually shocked that there was nobody there. A lot of Some people say, act, literally think this is true, that he went back to, to find the knife sheath. <laughs> I mean, what a joke. It's 9 in the morning and he's going to go over there looking for a knife sheath. He probably, there's no way he didn't think that they weren't already there um, analyzing the scene at that point. Okay. It doesn't make any sense. He went back there just like a lot of killers do. 
to check out their handiwork and he was shocked to see that nobody was there and he turned around and drove away but right back home again right what will the defense say he was doing then I don't know. Ah, what time is it? Ah, all right. Anyways, I, I tried, you guys. I tried doing the show, Collins and everything, and it just didn't... Nobody called. I mean, a few people called, but it just wasn't a big call-in night type night. Pebs called in, though. A few people did. So thank you to Lil Puppy Paws, Oddball, Mary Gonzalez, Revengeance, Michelle Kobe, uh, Kim Kristen, uh, Mary Buchanan, Amber gifted a membership, Pebs W. Uh, tomorrow might be on late in the evening, not really sure. Look at these idiots. <laughs> Look at this stupid fool here. No, you're, 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 you are thrilled, looky there. Okay, just take, can, can you do something for me? Take the picture off your ceiling, please. It, it feels creepy knowing that you're staring at me with your jar of Vaseline just to your side, man. It's a little spooky, I gotta admit. But wh I guess whatever it takes, man. Whatever gets your jollies. All right, so anyways, thanks everybody. Well, that's how disgusting these people are. That's what they do. They, it's like, oh, there's gray again. It's disgusting. You know that. They probably have a, the 40-inch the itch, itch monitor on their ceiling, and they look up at it. All right, well, thanks, everybody. And also thanks to Leah Baker, Heather N., uh, Birdie284, Quinta Huggins, Lil Barb, Revengeance, Hi, Esther, and Quinta Huggins. Man, I'm at the rethink. I might just, I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure out if I should just go down the video route where that's all I do. Like put out three, four videos a day. Maybe that will make up the difference. Maybe I'll get hot on one of them. But, man, this is... Wow. Yeah, got to go. All right, thanks, everybody. See you guys later, and be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Like rejecta, I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher. If you try and play me like a moon projector, crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pop protector. Fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector. With all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temple fucking checkcha. I have no agenda. I'm the pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back yep, to it. So tomorrow, I don't know when I'll be on. It'll be late in the evening again, but hope you guys can help the channel tomorrow. But um, I'm gonna try to play in like a golf tournament. And we'll see how that goes. All right. Thanks again, everybody, and be safe out there.